Hello and welcome back. My name is Brandon Watson. Today in this video, we're going to talk about a company who I believe stands the best chance to benefit from the future electric vehicle boom we're about to have. Now, this company's highest earning product is not even something that Tesla wants, as Elon needs something completely different to make his EV batteries, yet this company still offers and is actually one of the largest producers of in the world. So, as you may or may not be aware, Tesla is the one and only forward leading company innovating the electric vehicle market with other manufacturing companies sure to try and follow in its footsteps. As of recently, Elon Musk has stated that their metal of choice is nickel, with a goal to reduce the amount of cobalt currently used in their EV batteries. Let's talk about cathodes. What is a battery cathode? Cathodes are like bookshelves, where the metal, you know, the nickel, the cobalt, the manganese, or aluminum is like the shelf, and the lithium is the book. And really, what sets apart these different metals is how many books of lithium they can fit on the shelves and how sturdy the shelves are. Dollar per kilowatt hour cathode of just the metal, using just LME, you know, London Metal Exchange prices, um, versus the energy density of just the cathode. And you can see nickel is the cheapest and the highest energy density, and that's why increasing nickel is a goal of ours and really everybody's in the energy and in, in the uh, battery industry. Um, but one of the reasons why cobalt is even used at all is because it is a very stable bookshelf. And the challenge with going to pure nickel is stabilizing that bookshelf with only nickel. So in order to scale, uh, we really need to make sure that we're not constrained by total nickel availability. Um, I actually spoke with uh, the CEOs of the biggest mining companies in the world and said, uh, please make more nickel. It's <laughs> very important. Um, and so I think they are going to make more nickel. The market for Tesla might have run up already for the average investor, but has the market for nickel and its suppliers? Which supply for nickel is already experiencing a shortage that Elon Musk has already emphasized he needs more of. And better yet, if the market for nickel hasn't run its course, then who stands the chance to make the best return from not just Tesla's need for nickel, but from everyone else who follows in Musk's footsteps once he maximizes the metal's efficiency. If I had to take a guess, I would say whoever could supply the most amount of nickel will be the one who gains the largest contracts. Who would that company be? Well, let's take a look at the largest producer in the world of iron ore, iron ore pellets, nickel, and manganese, under the ticker name VALE. Vell operates in Brazil, Canada, Indonesia, and New Caledonia through Ferris Minerals, Base Metals, which we'll talk more over at the end, and Coal Segments. With iron ore being their number one highest earning product, Vell has and provides a logistics network that integrates mines, railroads, ships, and ports for the transportation of their ore, while also carrying third-party cargo to maximize their ship's payload and offering two passenger train lines in Brazil. This company is no joke, they do it all. Now, as I said, iron ore is currently their golden ticket in revenue right now. China has seen a huge demand for iron ore, citing a 19% increase in their crude steel production last month, compared to a year earlier, nearing a record level. Couple this with operational challenges and weather disruptions for the two largest iron ore producers in the first quarter, and you have ore prices at all-time highs. This is currently great for Vell's number one product, also thanks in part to China's pollution crackdown, which is helping iron ore's price rise. Now, getting back to Elon Musk's need for nickel. Well, I'd just like to reemphasize, you know, any mining companies out there, please mine more nickel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wherever you are in the world, please mine more nickel. And, and, and don't wait for nickel to go back to some long, some high point that you experienced some five years ago or whatever. Go for efficient, you know, obviously environmentally friendly nickel mining at high volume. You can hear as he states in his Q2 2020 earnings what he needs for his EV batteries is nickel, but what he wants is for it to be environmentally friendly and produced at high volume. Stepping forward into 2021, Tesla decides to become a technical partner in the New Caledonia Goro mine, which was recently sold from Vell to local interest. Now, although this was just one mine, Vell is the largest producer of nickel in the world and has multiple mines that span across Brazil, Canada, Indonesia, as well as New Caledonia. So high volume output, check. On the environmentally friendly side, Vell is currently investing in the Clean AER project, which aims to cut sulfur dioxide emissions from the nickel melting process by 85%. At their UK refinery, Vell challenged their employees to reduce waste, including hazardous waste, which in 2011, 85% of that which was generated was recovered and recycled. Their new current goal is to reuse, recycle, and use 100% of generated waste to produce renewable energy in the next five years. And if that's not enough, in Indonesia, the number one nickel producing country, Vell is recognized for four consecutive years on their post mining land reclamation efforts. So altogether in terms of environmentally friendly, check. Now, before we go on to the good news, 
I want to briefly go back to Vell's base metal segment. According to this Bloomberg article, thanks to the current battery boom, Vell is looking to spin off its base metals business as it attempts to maneuver with a global transition to clean energy. This move will also help put the company in a better place to seek continued opportunity growth through the electric vehicle supply chain as they expand output on copper and nickel while exiting out of coal. The article also cites that Vell has signed a significant multi-year contract to supply battery-grade nickel and wants to channel 30 to 40% of its high-quality nickel to the EV space, stating that Vell already has the environmental, social, and governance credentials in Canada to do so. Vell's copper output, which is used in wiring, is looking to be increased from 360,000 tons to 500,000 tons in the coming years. And as analyst Grant Spore states, the company is one of the biggest nickel producers globally, but their earnings are dwarfed by iron ore, so this is all about unlocking value. Now saying all that, I really don't care about any of it. What I love about this stock is actually in the charts, which I'll go over at the end of the technical analysis. Now, if you already joined our free Discord, you would have seen me talk about Vell over the last two weeks as myself and a few others have already took a position into Vell. Now, I apologize for not getting this video out sooner as if you haven't noticed, the housing market is actually currently going through its own boom. And as a real estate photographer, well, you can imagine I've been quite busy. So going to the charts, we can see that on April 15th, what drew me to this stock was the super sexy multi-month consolidation that was going on between $16.3 to $19. What I wasn't sure of at the time was their earnings as I never like to hold through earnings with this type of manipulated market. Though when you have a solid company that trades 28 million shares on average, price starts to become a little harder to manipulate. Now that Val has reported an earnings beat late last month, we can see that price is starting to trend higher and it's banned its range. As price trends higher, we can see that every move to the upside is validated with higher volume, which is exactly what you want to see when looking for price to sustain itself at each level. Now you might say here, but Brandon, isn't price already shooting up? Aren't you afraid of it coming back down? And I say, nah, not really. What I compare this to is ATI, which I called out back in November and has gone up 82% since or ENPH at $40 before it went up 467% to $200 in a little less than a year. So is price already trending up and am I afraid of it coming back? No, <laughs> not really. So where can this potentially go? Well, in order to find that out, we have to zoom all the way out to 2007. We'll take our current lines and extend them out on the max weekly chart where every candle equates to one week's worth of price action. From there, we'll add a few lines from previous areas of resistance as those will more than likely be areas of resistance on the way back up. This puts resistance levels near the 23.5, 26.8, 29.5 and $34 level. None of these levels matter unless we can hold over the previous level of resistance, which Val's share price currently crossed over last week at $21. Now it needs to hold over the $21 mark as it starts to take on the 23.5 level. Otherwise, share price could drop back to the $19 or $20 level to test those as supports. Though, with the news over China and the price of iron ore going up, this might not be the case, which I'll explain why in a minute. Looking at the technicals on Finviz, we can see that Val's average price target is at 23.24, which corresponds with the 23.5 level of resistance. Beta sits at 1.02, so it moves in speed relative to the market, which is great because it allows for you to scale in and out very easily. The relative volume is what I find most interesting as volume has been picking up almost every day, and a lot of it is being hidden in the after-hour sessions. Going back to mid-April on the 5-minute chart, we could see on the 16th that volume spiked by 3 million shares when on average, each five minute candle would only see about 500,000 shares or less. Three million shares at around 19.4 is roughly 58 million worth of Vail stock. Now, as Steve puts it, that's not someone, but something. Then, after hours on the same day, another large print of 1.2 million shares. The next day, 1 million shares around 19.5. And we start to see whoever's buying these large amounts of shares is starting to jack around with the price during pre market so that they can scoop up more shares at a lower price thanks to retailers being shaken out of their positions. The following day on the 22nd, when price drops, we see the share price being held up by another 1.4 million shares near 19.4, followed by two large prints of a million shares each at the end of the day. Then, when Vail has their earnings on the 26th, which they reported they beat expectations, whoever's buying millions of shares shoots the price down by a mere 18,000 shares to see our retailers one last time before the trend starts going up. And every day after that, we get large prints of over a million shares being bought up at random points in the day. 2 million, 1.5 million, 1.2, 1.6, 3.8 million shares at the close being bought up. 2.8 million shares after hours and then finally on friday we have a large print of 1.9 million shares trading inside a five minute candle when again every candle before that on average was trading less than four to five hundred thousand shares 
This one order alone was 5.5% of the total volume traded for the day. The 2.8 million during after hours before that was a whopping 9.8% of the total volume traded during regular trading hours. So what do you think? You think someone is trying to semi-hide their intentions of buying up tons of Val? Maybe in this current crazy retailer market, whoever is buying this up doesn't want the share price to escape from their hands before they're done loading however many boats they have lined up. If that's the case, then going back to the daily chart, we can see that Vail might actually have an opportunity of turning into another EMPH or ATI while breaking past its current resistance levels. I mean, the volume is certainly coming in and price is actually holding itself up compared to some other companies out there presently. How should this be played? Well, I would wait for any bounce off the 9 EMA on the daily chart. So far, price has a history of stair-stepping its way up off the 9 EMA, and so theoretically the best bet would be to wait for a small doji to form near the support. Then, so that you aren't buying into a downtrend, you want to wait for one more day and buy the break over the previous day's candle while placing a stop loss just below the breakout of that point. This will allow you to buy the bounce while staying relatively safe, waiting for the confirmation that price might start trending higher again. Remember that nothing is guaranteed, so don't go in heavy-handed too fast. Consider that if everything I stated about mining nickel, Tesla, the EV space, and this hidden valley of volume turns out to be true, then maybe Vail will not just be a swing trade for quick and easy gains, but maybe a multi-month or multi-year long hold that could return quite the potential profit thanks to this little big mining company. So what do you think about all this? Drop a comment below. I love everyone's feedback. And if you're catching this a couple days or a couple weeks later, you might want to consider hitting the notification bell so that we get alerted before the fact and not after the move. Take care and have a great weekend.